Tax Tone got 35 calendars. 35 calendars. It's a long time. It's too long to be dead. Um, that's what they say uh, in the prison system, man. That's too long to be dead. He got to find his way out of it. Um, I'm just keeping in gully with y'all. He bought that. He bought that whole situation. <laughs> this shit bigger than Tax Tone going to jail, man. This is bigger than Tax Tone going to jail. It is, it is, it is, it is. Let's talk about briefly the phenom of public figures going to prison. This shit is unbelievable. <laughs> It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable, man. It's like a rash broke out or something and shit. Like somebody like injected these entertaining niggas with the vibe and shit, man. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on, man. But these niggas is running to the fucking penitentiary like a motherfucker, man. Like, God damn. Uh, the younger generation, they the ones that's getting shot and shit. They the ones probably getting killed. The older niggas, they going to jail, man, in the penitentiary, man. I don't know what the fuck's, I don't know what the fuck is going on, man. Uh, niggas got to start exercising better judgment, especially if you've been to the penitentiary already, man. But, and let's start minimizing the severity of going to prison, man. You're losing time. You can never recover that. You never can recover that productive time in society. You can't. People be talking about, man, they got cell phones in jail and they got MacBooks and da 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 da, da, da and contact visits and shit. Man, that's fucking jail, my nigga. That's jail. That's time out. That's time out. And Tax Tone got 35 years and shit. That's kind of like they struck him out of the game and shit. You know what I mean? batter up it's like they they struck him out like he struck out he was up to bat he was a top podcaster in um in hip-hop probably not the top but the top in our listening ear the shit that we listen to you know what i'm saying the shit that we find interesting uh let's acknowledge the fact that there within the hip-hop culture there's a core and tax tone service the core. He had the core's listening ear. Um, he had it. He had some type of fixation with Troy Ave. Let me say before I get off into that, he was picking with other niggas too. He was saying what the fuck he wanted to say and do to other niggas too. I was inspired by him in some regards and shit. Even though I was out before him, it wasn't the trouble shit. It was the fact that he didn't stand down to nobody and shit. He didn't give a fuck how much money you had. He didn't give a fuck about none of that shit, man. He was gonna say exactly how he felt and he was poignant with it. And he had a, a, a thing with Troy Ave. It's been my experience that predators when they see you moving by yourself, they're gonna try to fuck with you and shit. And um, in the movie Shawshank Redem Redemption, you had Andy Dufresne. He was an attorney doing prison time. He's a fish out of water. He's moving by himself. First thing happened, the sisters came for him and shit. The blades came after him and shit. And that's the sim that's a similar situation that happens in real life when, especially in hip hop. Hip hop's a dirty, dirty cesspool. It is. I've learned that. Um, people see you. You can be by yourself losing. You can be by yourself losing. You can be a bum ass nigga by yourself, and you're gonna be by yourself. But the moment you start excelling by yourself, niggas start looking not at you, but around you. Who's his associates? Who's he's who is he with? Da, 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 da. They was doing that shit to me. They was doing that shit to me. You know what I'm saying? When I started escalating and shit, when my name started coming up with shit. Who is he? Who is he with? Blood this. Is he is he you know, is he gang in a gang? Or you know who who where he from? 
And then that's when they started saying that I was Lord Jamar's people and shit. That's how that rumor started. Because niggas was trying to figure out why the fuck I was saying what the fuck was on my mind and shit. Like I had to be protected with somebody. Like I couldn't be by myself running my platform saying what the fuck I want. But Tax Tone was predating my situation saying what the fuck he want to big niggas and in, in, in my opinion and shit. But he felt that Troy Ave was soft. He felt that Troy Ave was soft. Now, this is a nigga who's got a... I think he was shot in the eye. He got an eye situation or something like that. He's picking with a nigga. <laughs> He's picking with a nigga who get money and shine and this shit. And it just got hate all over it. <laughs> It got hate all over it, man. But he just kept fucking with him, man. He just felt he was a sucker, man. A lot of it was unfolding on Twitter. I remember that. That's It, it, it was so much that it, it kind of stood out. That's when I started following him. Tax Tone and shit. I, I started seeing him on Vlad TV. But he was the dude who he had rolled up his sleeves. I believe he was the first... Guy that probably had a street, a real street pedigree that went into broadcasting from the the audio perspective. And um, yeah, he did it before a lot of us. But he was picking with Troy Ave for some time. And it just seemed like, you know, some hate and shit. He wasn't just fucking with Troy Abdul. He he had some shit going on with Meek. He said something about Meek. He ended up getting in the Wraith, interviewing him. That was his, I guess, reward for saying what the fuck was on his mind. Anyway, the 35-year sentence, he bought that because he took the hammer in there. If he took, If he didn't take that hammer in there, this I can guarantee you. If he didn't take that hammer in there, he wouldn't have been charged with shooting anyone because he wouldn't have had a hammer on him. He wouldn't have had the fire on him. This I know. So, um, yeah, he brought it with him and shit. And when somebody is moving like that, they they already then calculated the calamity. The calamity is this: where I'm going, I might see see somebody that I have a problem with. I'm not saying that he was the type of nigga that was carrying a hammer every day um, on his own, but he took he he took it there. He took it there. He took the he took the hammer there. So he's expecting a calamity. He's expecting somebody to probably approach him or something like that. And he's often said it. I wish a nigga would. Want try me. He said that. He said it. They got it on camera. He said it way before he did it. One of these rap niggas, try, try me. He said that. He said it. The situation happened. He got 35 years. I see a lot of people trying to put emphasis on Troy Ave's participation with, um, in the case. Troy Ave didn't get tax on 35 years. Tax tone got 35 years being a real nigga. This is what y'all tie to it. This is what y'all tie to the real nigga shit. And it is tied together that um, you know, when you're a real nigga, you got to go down with the ship. You got to go down with the ship when you're a real nigga. Like Big Amar from Brooklyn and shit. Shout out to Baby Sam. Baby Sam, uh, Big Amar, that was one of Baby Sam's guys. He just passed away in prison. Baby Sam said he lived by the death before dishonor, so he ate the whole thing, whatever he had that came with that shit. And um, this is the real nigga lifestyle. You got to eat the whole thing or whatever. So he took the hammer in there. He got the case. He got to eat the whole thing and shit, everything that came with that. Um, it was on camera. 
was fucking with Troy Ave. Troy Ave bodyguard got killed. Y'all gonna have y'all gonna fill in the blanks for me. Y'all gonna say, but Troy did this and Troy did that. I get it. And let me clarify something. I ain't never interviewed Troy Ave. He ain't never did nothing for my platform. We've spoken on the phone several times. And um I'm somewhat of, I'm growing to be a fan of his music since his attacks on these other creeps, I don't even want to say their name because it kind of like keeps the shit going and shit. But um, yeah, this ain't no biased dialogue that I'm giving to y'all right now. I'm telling you the truth. He took the hammer in there and he got the whole thing and shit. You got to take the whole thing. Like he said, try me. When niggas say that shit, they got to go all the way. Same with um, Casanova and shit. Casanova is on The Breakfast Club and other platforms talking all that space shit. You know what I'm saying? And then when confronted with it in real life, when it affects your biological clock, it's like being suffocated or buried, buried alive. That's what Delroy Uzi uh, Edwards said. It's like yeah, being buried alive and shit. And niggas don't want that. Especially if you've um, experienced eating at Houston's and Mr. Chow's and, you know what I mean, all of this type of shit, they they don't want to go back to prison. They, they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. So, um, yeah, he in a situation. It's fucked up. He in the same situation as uh, Casanova, Tax Tone, ARAB. Sue Surf got a sentence and coming up. You got them YSL niggas. You got them YFN niggas. Quando Rondo and them just got picked up. I believe um, indicting black rappers, black hip hop artists has become an industry. I believe the government has taken note of the notoriety and I believe there's a profit margin in there somewhere, too. Because, uh, you know, you go on court TV or something like that, and those are regular court cases. Ain't nobody gonna really watch that shit with old folks and shit. But if you put the prosecution of a hip-hop artist on a media platform, there's people getting paid. Somebody's getting paid big dollars for that shit. And not only that, these uh, prosecutors who one day uh, want to be judges and shit like that, they want to have that on their resume. I was the one that put ARF from OBH in jail for 45 years. I was the one to put Tax Tone, the, the famous podcaster, away for 35 years. There's people who are racking up resumes on the backs of um, gifted people. Everybody that made it. And music, everybody that got a look has something about them that people found um, attractive. And this shit crazy to see that they crashing out like that, like this. There has to be a common factor that's triggering these people. I don't know what it is. Whether these guys is using the same drug People probably should try to look into that. See, is these niggas all using the same drugs, some shit like that. Like, God damn, like, that ain't nobody said, man, I'm about to get the fuck low. Uh, I ain't talking about now. If you're, talking, if you're thinking about getting low within, like, the last year or something like that, it's too late. But people who have a clean slate, get low, man. <laughs> Straight up. Lay low and play slow. That's that's my philosophy, man. That you'll be there. The turtle will get there. I've seen too many people crash out at a high rate of speed, man, and be out of the game. Fuck a visit. Fuck a commissary slip. Fuck waiting on a letter. All of that shit. Eating them fucking trays and shit. Be cold as fucking in fucking jails and shit, man. Like... Fuck that, man. Fuck that, man. It's I don't know what to say. Uh, There's going to be a whole lot of niggas wearing koofies. The Sunni population is going to explode on the backs of these niggas and shit. 
<laughs> they is straight up. But that's all I have. I don't feel the Troy Ave is no snitch. That shit was all on camera. That shit was all on camera. He's on camera firing a murder weapon, basically. And you got to explain how this shit transpired and shit. So well, I believe his um, stance was a self-defense situation. And they're going to offer me a plea bargain to say my chain of events, which y'all is called, y'all calling it testimony, uh, testifying and shit. Whatever. Um, he got the 35. Find something else to do with your life, man. If it ain't productive, that's all I got to say. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get the notifications. I'll get with y'all in a minute. Peace.